Hi, I'm Dennis. Maybe you already watched my YouTube video where I carve a female torso out of a stack of plywood panels with the shape Oko. Of course, some of you asked when I was going to carve a male version. Well, here it is. And in this video, I'll show you how I did it. The process that I used here is quite similar to that of the female torso. So I won't go over all the technical aspects in much detail again. You can check out the other video for more information. My biggest challenge for this project was that I could not find any volunteers to pose. So I decided to be my own model. To get in shape, I followed a strict and very nutritious Arnold Schwarzenegger diet and combined this with a high intensity Sylvester Stallone workout training schedule for two days until I had miraculously transformed into a hybrid of the T-800 Terminator and Rambo 3. I then had pictures taken from all angles for a 3D reconstruction by photogrammetry. I imported the pictures into Zephyr to create a dense point cloud and used this to create a 3D mesh with the same program. This process had to be repeated for different sites because it was impossible to finish the entire photo shoot in one go as I had to hold my breath to stand perfectly still during the photo sessions and due to some practical limitations, such as backlighting. I combined and cut all the individual pieces to fit like a puzzle, stitched them together and smoothened the scenes, until it had become a single solid piece. I then hollow data out to reduce weight, shorten the carving time and decrease the gluing surface area. I cut the torso into 15 slices of exactly 16 mm thick and rearranged them so that they would fit on a total of 10 panels of 600 by 600 mm. I plan to apply the same CNC settings, use the same MDF spoil board and 17.8 mm thick plywood, drill the holes to the same depth and insert the router bit with a Z clearance distance of 5 mm. Based on this setup, I designed the two paths in V-Carve. For each of the panels, I positioned the dowel holes in the same location imported the files that I had created in Mesh Mixer for two-sided carves, added tabs, and set the roughing and finishing boundaries. I started the carves 0.9mm below the plywood surface to remove the thin top and bottom layers, and also rotated all even-numbered slices 90 degrees, so that the alternating grain direction of the plywood layers would continue between the panels. Alright, enough talk. Let us get started. I wanted to reuse the MDF spoil board that I had cut for the female torso, but I would never be able to drill the new dowel holes in the exact same position as the existing ones. So I rotated it 90 degrees. I secured the spoil board onto the CNC bed using four of the eight holes. The other four holes in the spoil board were for clamps, and I placed four more clamps to the sides. I went to Home Depot to purchase two sandy plywood boards of 4 by 8 feet and had them cut at the store into pieces of 2 by 2 feet. For this project I needed a total of 10 of those panels. I positioned the first plywood panel in the center, clamped it down and inserted a quarter inch upcut end mill from white side for the roughing passes. But first I had to drill the two dowel holes with this setup. After that it was a pretty straightforward sequence of roughing the top side then unclamping the stock, flipping it upside down and using the dowel holes for precise positioning before starting the roughing pass of the other side. Each roughing pass took about 40 minutes to one and a half hours per side. Once the roughing carves were completed, I swapped the end mill for a quarter inch pull nose bit from white side for the finishing passes. I started with the bottom side first so that I wouldn't have to flip the panel upside down but could start right after resetting the Z0 position. The finishing passes took between 2 and 3 hours per side, so the total time to complete a single panel on both sides was around 7 hours. And I had to do this a total of 10 times.
After several days worth of CNC routing, I cut the tabs with the handsaw and took the shapes out of the panels. I glued them together with regular wood glue, which I spread out in a generous layer on both sides to minimize the gaps between the pieces. I first stuck them together in pairs for easy clamping, let those dry and then repeated this stepwise gluing process until all pieces were in place. With all these rounded shapes, the protruding stumps of the tabs provided good handholds for the clamps. Once the glue had fully dried, I used the Dremel to remove the tab stumps with the sanding drum. I then leveled the scars of the tabs as well as the tracks left by the router bit and the rough gluing edges with an 80 grit flap wheel for an even surface. As a final preparation for the varnishing, I polished the entire statue by hand to smoothen out any blemishes. I used clear varnish to finish it off. This transparent coating nicely emphasized the distinct colors of the layers and the alternating grain direction as well as the different types of wood created the effect of a topographic contour map with colors ranging from a dark brown to a light tan. Finally, I roughened the surface of a green marble slab with a Dremel applied a white bead of Fusit LN2000 from Liquid Nails and pressed the torso on top until it had set. All right, that's it. Now Adam here can keep Eve some company. Thank you for watching.